Hello, this is Conrad Hubbard, and hopefully you're watching this video because you want to make a 3D print. And I'm going to go over what you can expect out of a 3D printer, just some little items here and there that I got, and uh, also present some questions that you should ask before you actually 3D print something. So, first of all, let's show off what a 3D printer can do just a little bit. This is a thermal detonator from Star Wars. It's actually three pieces that were put together. And this is actually ABS. I mean, you can kind of see that it looks smooth, but you actually can see some layers in there. And uh, any 3D print, you'll actually see uh, a texture due to the way it's printed with the layers. Uh, and actually, ABS can be smooth, but that will be a future video, hopefully. Uh, you can actually print things that are in awesome contours, like this uh, Dodge Viper here. And this is at PLA, but they're not too much of a difference. Just It's not as strong of a material as ABS is. But you can see that it has no problems making contours. But if you actually look up at the hood, you'll notice that in the Z direction, because it was printed like this, so Z is in that direction, you'll see that the resolution isn't as good because the layers actually have to be a certain thickness for it to print correctly. So, um, But when it comes to these contours, it does a great job. You can also print functional items like this auger. Someone uh, printed at this quarter's uh, robotics uh, course and it was made to push out jalapenos and it's actually a multi-piece part as well and what I think is really cool is you can actually print assemblies that are already built like this ball bearing and it had support material that held the little balls in place and then once you remove that it'll actually operate I mean not too useful for being a ball bearing but it actually works and there's so many things you can do with just that idea there and then uh, You'll see this in another video. This is a little dog bone tensile test. And this kind of shows you what a raft looks like and what support material looks like. But anyway, uh, before you begin a 3D print, you want to ask yourself some basic questions about what you want. And uh, one of the big questions is how big is your print going to be? The printer in the robotics lab is, and most printers actually are, are limited to about 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches. And this actually became an issue with this auger because this auger, I believe, is just about 10 inches and it was going to be really difficult to print in one piece. So it had to be designed in two pieces that could be glued together. And then uh, another question you want to ask yourself is how small is it going to be? I don't have any specific examples, but the smaller you go with a 3D print, the more the resolution becomes a problem because you get this certain layer height and if you have something really, really small, something really small mechanical, it's going to be more prone to breaking uh, from, you know, little minute bending stresses and stuff like that. So it can't be too big, it can't be too small, and uh, actually that goes into the next thing, was how strong does it need to be? The uh, plastic, or ABS plastic is what we print with, and it's rated at about 7,000 PSI, or 7 KSI from Engineering Toolbox. And that's assuming it's just a solid piece of ABS. After it's printed, it actually is much less. Uh, the most you'll get is 6,000 PSI, but according to a, a research project we did at Anchor, if the weakest side, if see if I can show this to you properly, but if you can see up close here, the way that this was printed, hopefully it does it supposed to do. Well, we'll show a close up of this later. The way it's printed, it actually, when you bend it, it only has 2,000 psi in uh, in that direction. And uh, we'll, we'll make, do a close-up of this to show you more about why that's an important subject. But you you basically have to assume that you're limited to 2,000 psi when you're designing for a 3D uh, part. So you got to make it beefy. It can't you can't make a paperclip out of plastic. I mean, it had to be a big paperclip too. So like, uh, steel's got a strength of 54 KSI in comparison. So you can't really build things that are too power, uh, too strong. And also they're not gonna withstand as, many, as much temperature. ABS does pretty well, but you're gonna find limitations in the material properties. So go through and, and actually make sure, go through the material properties and understand that this is a plastic piece and is it gonna do what you want it to do material-wise. And then there's also orientation. So there's a lot of ways to print things. and as I was showing you with the auger, there are a lot of ways to print this auger. And the way this one was printed was standing up, which is a problem actually. And uh, you can also print it sideways. 
and uh, even the Viper here, you could print it at an angle, you could print it upside down, you can print it about any way you like. And this is about the best example I have with me right now. But this was printed on its side, it could have been printed flat, could have been printed vertical, but we chose this orientation. This was actually part of the research project we did. And to print it this way, we actually had to put the support structure where you see it here, and we had to use a raft, otherwise it would warp. So uh, you have to know how you're going to print it too uh, once you're designing it. And some of them are intuitive, but some pieces are not as intuitive. Like, for instance, I mean, this is intuitive, whereas you would print it like this. This would be the best way to print it. But you could also print it like this, but it probably wouldn't work that well. So you have to kind of think through that. And the best way really is to start printing and making mistakes and finding that out for yourself. So we're going to show some close-ups as to how the material uh, performs in uh, certain directions and try and get that out there.